They found this comet in August of 2013. And it will still be putting on a show after New Year's 2016. That is definitely enough to pique my interest, ladies and gentlemen. I believe we might have found the comet of the century. No guarantees with this crap, though. A. You start out with a mysterious, incorrect introduction by the pros themselves. B. It's supposed to be huge. And C. They found it like two and a half years before it'll get here. I mean, they didn't find Comet Ison that soon. And the pictures of Comet Ison were nowhere near as great this early in the game. You know what I'm saying? While initial reports from the Minor Planet Center in Cambridge, Massachusetts Categorized Object 2013 USUC-10 as a very large near-Earth asteroid. New observations now indicate that it is in fact a long-period comet. So it's a potentially hazardous near-Earth comet. Now there's gonna be no doom in danger from this, unless it's of course like a hundred miles wide, which it's probably not, but we might get a really cool show. And hey, why do all these comets show up around Thanksgiving and Christmas? You know what I'm saying? The initial orbit, okay, so they were like, it's a giant asteroid that orbits around Earth and Jupiter every six years. And they were like, wait up, hold on a second. Once I sobered up, it's a small comet that has a multi-million year orbit. You know, that's a pretty big fluctuation discrepancy, buddy. <laughs> so, the weirdness has already begun. And that has me in a sensual commentary tizzy. For our news is the record holder for Stellar Cool. Stay cool. This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents... I'm always like, Hey Comet, where did you come from? Comet hunting is fun and easy. Well, I don't know about that. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Comet of the Century adventure. I'm your host, Thor, Thor News. So let's get this wild and strange party started. Last night I stumbled across quite a story. What I'm talking about is Comet C-2013. United States 1-0 Catalina. And let me tell you right off the bat, this puppy is weird to begin with. It was originally discovered almost two years ago on Halloween 2013. C-2013 U.S. Catalina 
is an OR cloud comet discovered on the 31st October 2013 by the Catalina Gas Survey at an apparent magnitude of 19. As of July, the comet is around apparent magnitude 8. C2013 US 10 is dynamically new. It came from the Oort cloud with a loosely bound chaotic orbit that was easily perturbed by galactic tides and passing stars. Before entering the planetary region, C2013 US 10 had an orbital period of millions of years. After leaving our planetary region, it will be on an ejection trajectory. This one's got an eccentricity of over one, which means it's really eccentric, baby. The weirdness on this comet begins back in November 5th, 2013, when NASA and the Jack Parsons Lab, also known as the Jet Propulsion Lab, at the California Institute of Technology announced surprising recent discoveries of three large near-Earth objects. Two surprisingly large near-Earth asteroids have been discovered in just the last week or so, as well as the third moderately large asteroid which, surprisingly, has gone undetected until now even though it can pass close enough to Earth to be classified as potentially hazardous. Not since 1983 has any near-Earth asteroid been found as large as the approximately 12-mile, 20-kilometer size of the two new large ones. In fact, there are only three other known near-Earth asteroids that are of comparable size or larger than the two new large ones. But it is important to note that none of these three New large near-Earth asteroids can come close enough to Earth to represent a near-term threat to our planet. Now we scroll down on these new bad boys. Are you with me? The second very large near-Earth object named 2013 United States one zero was discovered on October 31st by the Catalina Gas Survey. While the reflectivity of this object has not yet been determined, and hence its diameter is still uncertain. It is also likely to be around 12 miles in size. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Only three near-Earth asteroids are of comparable size or larger. 1036 Ganymed 433 Eros and 3552 Don Quixote. Why has it taken so long to discover these large near Earth asteroids? Well, 
The delayed discovery of 2013 US-10 is a bit harder to explain. Since current population models suggest that almost all near-Earth asteroids of this size and orbit should have already been found, a contributing factor may be that this object's orbit does not get closer than 50 million miles. So, when they first found it, they said it's huge and it's an asteroid. Now, they say Comet Ison, the first comet of the century. Dead of the century, really, but Hey, let's not open old wounds, shall we? Was about a half mile in its nucleus. Now, this bad boy would be 24 times larger than Ison. Granted, the closest it will get to Earth is 0.7 AU. So it's not that close, but if it's as large as guesstimated, we might get to see one hell of a show after Perihelion. But as an expert and someone with experience in this, don't get your hopes up, buddy. <laughs> Please. <laughs> you know. You'll just get mad and unsubscribe and I'll get blamed for another dud comment. But I will say the thing that made me look this up is I looked at these photographs of C2013 You Suck 10 and the photographs on this puppy from amateur astronomers are pretty dang good and the tail is extremely noticeable the, I'm sorry the tails are extremely noticeable the sodium tail the ion tail the fairy dust tail the Isis tail the Ebola tail the gold matter tail the dark matter tail, whatever tail, whatever, man, you can call it tails whatever you want. Alright, so then they corrected themselves and said, hey, guess what? We were wrong. Updated November 6th, 2013. Near Earth Object 2013. U.S. 10 is a long period comet. While initial reports from the Minor Planet Center in Cambridge, Massachusetts categorized Object 2013 USUC 10 as a very large near-Earth asteroid, new observations now indicate that it is in fact a long period comet. So it's a potentially hazardous near Earth comet. Now there's gonna be no doom and danger from this unless it's of course like a hundred miles wide, which it's probably not. But we might get a really cool show. And hey, why do all these comets show up around Thanksgiving and Christmas? You know what I'm saying? The initial orbit suggested this object is a large, short period near Earth asteroid. As we reported here yesterday, an updated orbit issued today by the Minor Planet Center removed the September 12th observations that belong to a whole nother object entirely and include earlier pre-discovery 
August and September observations made by the Catalina Sky Survey. The Eisen HD Observatory in Russia and Hawaii's Pan-STARRS group. The new orbit indicates that this object is in a long period near parabolic orbit about the sun. Furthermore, observations made last night at the Canada-France Hawaii Telescope indicate the object is showing modest cometary activity, which means that yesterday's rough estimate for the object's size about 12 miles or 20 kilometers must now be completely revised because people might modestly freak out if you thought it had a 12 mile nucleus I guess. A new size estimate is not yet available but the object could very well be much smaller than yesterday's estimate which is hilarious on its own you know and hey may i guess it could be much larger too uh but as you can see when they found these three objects and i remember when they found pretty fascinating and so um it does cross earth's orbital plane we are over at uh universe today with our buddy david dickinson comet c 2013 us catalina a preview for act one all right, so he's letting the drama kick in high gear right here. Do you live in or plan on visiting the Southern Hemisphere soon? A first time visitor to the inner solar system is ready to put on the first of a two part act starting this month as Comet Catalina breaks a tenth magnitude and crosses southern hemisphere skies. Now don't worry kids, we will get to see it in the northern hemisphere eventually. Though we're overdue for a this generation's great comet. We've had a steady stream of fine binocular comets in 2015. 2014 Q2 Lovejoy, in my personal opinion, was the coolest comet in photographs I've ever seen. And hey, US-10 Catalina looks to follow this trend. Topping out at just above naked eye visibility in late 2015 going into early 2016 so that's what's kind of cool and that's another thing our little halloween comet what shall she come dressed as will she be the comet of the century or will she be a total dud a clown and this is what's hilarious, is that even David Dickinson says, discovered by the Catalina Sky Survey on Halloween 2013, the comet received its unusual US-10 designation, as it was initially thought to be an asteroid early on in a periodic six-year orbit until a longer observation arc was completed. This is not an unusual situation. 
as new objects are often lost in the sun's glare before their orbit can be redefined. Okay, so they were like, it's a giant asteroid that orbits around Earth and Jupiter every six years. And they were like, wait up, hold on a second. Once I sobered up, it's a small comet that has a multi-million year orbit. You know, that's a pretty big fluctuation discrepancy, buddy. <laughs> Especially when you announce it. Like, hey, dude, we found this giant near-Earth asteroid. That comes around once every six years. Uh, no, 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 scratch that. Tiny little comet comes around every million years. Every million or so years, approximately. So, the weirdness has already begun. And that has me in a sensual commentary tizzy. We now know that U.S. Catalina is on a million year long orbit from the distant Oark cloud. Most likely, it was disturbed by an unrecorded close stellar passage a long time ago. And comets are like matches and stars set the matches on fire and then the matches fly through the solar system for millions of years. They're like dirty duck cat dragon snowball matches. That's exactly what comets are. And the comet also has a highly inclined orbit tilted almost 149 degrees relative to the ecliptic. It was at a 19th magnitude when first discovered and 7.7 .7 astronomical units when first discovered, suggesting an intrinsically bright comet. Prospects for US 10 Catalina currently favor latitude 35 degrees north southward in late June, though that'll change radically as the comet makes a plunge south this summer. As of this writing, Catalina was at a 11 magnitude with a bullet and currently sits in the constellation of Sculptor at a declination of negative 30 degrees in the southern sky, and this was written in June. Here's a blow by blow for Act 1 for Comet C-2013 U.S. Catalina over the next few months. July 26th, it passes the fourth magnitude star, Gamma Lucani, August First, it reaches opposition. August 15th, it'll be 1.1 astronomical units from Earth. It will reach the closest point to the Sun on November 15th. 0.8229 astronomical units. For vaulting up into the northern hemisphere sky in the early dawn. Like Comet Q2 Lovejoy, last winter, US 10 Catalina should top out around a plus fourth magnitude or so. As it glides across the constellation Ursa Major, just after New Year's. And like many comets, the discriminating factor between a great 
and binocular comet this time around is simply a matter of orbital geometry. Had C-2013 US-10 Catalina arrived at perihelion in May time frame, it would have passed less than 0.2 astronomical units from Earth. But that's cosmic irony for you. Keep in mind, with Comet US-10 Catalina being a dynamically new first-time visitor to the inner solar system, it may well brighten ahead of expectations. And there's more to come. Watch for Act 2 as we follow the continuing adventures of Comet C-2013 US-10 Catalina this coming September. They found this comet in August of 2013. And it will still be putting on a show after New Year's 2016. That is definitely enough to pique my interest, ladies and gentlemen. I believe we might have found the comet of the century. No guarantees with this crap, though. Exciting stuff. Welcome to the party, pal. God bless everyone. Exciting stuff. Welcome to the party, pal. God bless everyone.